the US military is about to start shooting explosive computers at people. There's a new arms race happening right now, and it's not drones or some fancy power armor. This is something way cooler and way more terrifying. It's grenade launchers that fire smart ammunition, basically turning every grunt into a walking artillery piece. I'm going to break down exactly why the Pentagon is so obsessed with these exploding sniper rifles, how they actually work, and why China is already fielding their own version while the US is still 3D printing prototypes. But first, let me show you just how game-changing these things really are because what I'm about to tell you is going to make you understand why every military on the planet is racing to get their hands on this technology. Remember those chunky grenade launchers you see strapped under rifles in movies? Those are about to become as obsolete as muskets. Picture this. You're a 19-year-old soldier in some godforsaken desert, and you're carrying an M4 with an M203 grenade launcher attached underneath. That thing is front heavy as hell, throws off your aim, and good luck getting into any kind of decent shooting position when you're trying to take cover. Plus, firing that thing is like playing mortar operator. You're lobbing grenades in an arc, hoping they land somewhere near the bad guys. The US Army looked at this problem and said, what if we just made it a completely separate weapon? Meet the Precision Grenadier System. Basically a grenade rifle that fires flat trajectories like a sniper rifle, but with explosive ammo. The reason this matters is accuracy and speed. Instead of hoping your grenade lands in the right zip code, you're now point and shoot with explosive ammunition. It's the difference between throwing a baseball and shooting a bullet. These are basically flying computers. Barrett and FN Herstal are both competing for this contract, and they're showing off these prototype weapons that look like something out of a sci-fi movie. Barrett's SSRS, their squad support rifle system, can fire eight different types of 30 millimeter rounds. We're talking high explosive, incendiary, smoke, armor piercing, and a 30 millimeter shotgun that's basically designed to recreate your favorite video game moments in real life. But the real magic is in the programmable ammunition. These rounds have built-in computers that can be programmed to explode at specific distances. See someone hiding behind a wall? Program your round to explode right above their head. Enemy taking cover in a trench, airburst round, problem solved. While the US still playing around with 3D printed prototypes, China has already deployed their own version in actual combat. Meet the QLU-11, China's grenade sniper rifle that's been in service since 2011. This thing is a beast. It fires 35 millimeter rounds out to 1100 meters. That's twice the range of what the US prototypes can do. But here's the catch. It weighs 28 pounds without ammunition. This isn't something you sling over your shoulder and run around with. It's a crew-served weapon that needs a bipod or tripod to fire effectively. The Chinese designed this for very specific scenarios. Think about where China expects to fight. The mountains along the Indian border where you can see your enemy for an hour before you're in range, or the beaches of Taiwan with all those bunkers and defensive positions. For those situations, having a weapon that can reach out and touch someone at over a kilometer with explosive rounds makes perfect sense. China's already using these in combat against pirates and insurgents, while the US versions are still in the prototype phase. Sometimes being second to market means you get to learn from everyone else's mistakes, but sometimes it just means you're behind. The war in Ukraine has completely changed how the Pentagon thinks about these weapons, and it's not for the reason you might expect. Originally, these precision grenade systems were designed for counterinsurgency operations. Think Afghanistan, where you need to take out specific targets without leveling an entire building. But Ukraine showed us something different. Modern warfare is increasingly about drone swarms, and traditional anti-aircraft systems are way too expensive to use against $500 drones. So the US military had a light bulb moment. What if we could program these smart rounds to detect drones and explode when they get close? Suddenly, every soldier becomes a mobile anti-aircraft system. Instead of needing expensive Patriot missiles to take out drones, you've got infantry with smart ammunition that can detect and destroy aerial targets. This is why the Army specifically requires these systems to engage targets as close as 35 meters. They're not just thinking about bunkers and trenches anymore, they're thinking about drone swarms buzzing overhead. But the real reason the Pentagon is obsessed with these weapons has nothing to do with technology. It's about changing how war is fought. The US military is built around maneuver warfare. 
Basically, move fast, hit hard, and don't get bogged down waiting for support. But what happens when your squad runs into a bunker or an armored vehicle? Traditionally, you'd have to call for air support, artillery, or bring up heavy weapons teams. That takes time, coordination, and it slows down your advance. With a precision grenade system, suddenly every squad has organic fire support. See a bunker? Handle it yourself. Lightly armored vehicle? Not a problem. Enemy position behind cover? Air burst round sorts that out. You don't need to wait for anyone else to catch up or move into position. It's the difference between combined arms coordination and self-contained lethality. Here's something that might surprise you. There's actually an international law from 1868 that technically makes these weapons illegal. The St. Petersburg Declaration banned explosive rounds under 400 grams, which was the smallest artillery shell when it was written. The idea was to prevent unnecessarily cruel weapons. Now this law gets ignored more often than speed limits on the highway, but it occasionally pops up in legal journals when lawyers get bored. The U.S. learned this lesson the hard way with the XM-25 program, their previous attempt at smart grenade launchers. They had to carefully engineer their rounds to comply with international law while still being effective. It's like threading a legal needle while someone's shooting at you. This is why the current systems use 30mm rounds instead of smaller ones. They're just heavy enough to avoid the legal issues that killed previous programs, but small enough to fire in flat trajectories without needing mortar-like arcs. Before you get too excited about these Warhammer 40k weapons, let me bring you back to Earth with some harsh reality. Barrett's SSRS is basically a mock-up right now. There's no bolt visible, no way to drop the magazine, and other than a charging handle and safety, there's not much else to see. It's basically a very expensive proof of concept that weighs about as much as an M249 saw, but without the bipod that catches on everything. The ammunition is going to be heavy and expensive. Each round is basically a miniature computer with explosive capabilities. We're not talking about mass-produced rifle rounds here. These are precision munitions that cost more than most people's monthly grocery bill. The reality is that we're probably still years away from seeing these deployed in meaningful numbers. The technology is impressive, but turning impressive technology into battlefield-ready weapon systems is a whole different challenge. So there you have it the U.S. military's quest to give every soldier their own personal artillery piece. These exploding sniper rifles represent a fundamental shift in how we think about infantry combat, turning every grunt into a one-man crew-served weapon team. But here's the thing. All this advanced ammunition technology is completely useless if drones can spot your soldiers before they can even get a chance to fire. Modern warfare has shifted dramatically towards drone surveillance and precision strikes, which means traditional camouflage techniques are basically obsolete. So click on this video right here where I break down modern camouflage, how soldiers disappear from drones, and show you the cutting-edge stealth technology that's literally reshaping battlefield tactics. Trust me, after watching that, you'll understand why the future of warfare isn't just about better weapons, it's about who can stay hidden long enough to use them.